Uh, the last program that we're hoping to introduce in the fall is a digital manufacturing program. So I have a, a little snapshot here of the future of manufacturing. We have worked really hard across Cosmos, but at Mitchell specifically, to build a, a pipeline and an ecosystem for STEM and robotics. And really, we feel that as students are coming through, Whitney and I know you, you weren't planning <laughs> to be here for that, but um, as she's building those programs, we need something at the high school that engages students, right? That provides them those opportunities to enroll or be employed. And we feel that this digital manufacturing program is going to be able to do both of those and really tap into the interests of students. But not only in a way that's what we know manufacturing right now, but our students are going into what, right now, if you look up and do research, we're in the fourth industrial revolution. Um, so this is industry 4.0 and the way students engage um, in the workforce. So on the other side, we have kind of some models of what that classroom space might look like. Um, embedding in some of those industry robot components and, and some other pieces there too. There we go. So across the top, you can see the course sequence. Again, it will be a, a full pathway. We do have the, the person on staff right now who mm -hmm. can um, put this in action. So we have personnel, right? So we're looking at you know what the cost would be. We have personnel. We have the right person already employed in the district, ready to go. We have space in the building that can be allocated to this project immediately. Okay, so those are two check marks that are already in place. Right, so if we start back at the top, right, this is connecting students to relevant in-demand careers. The second one, right, we are hoping that with this program we're establishing a footprint, right? Mitchell Community Schools becomes a hub for manufacturing. That's where we go to find talent. Um, because we know that what's coming from that based on, it's an opportunities multiplier, right? Students have industry-recognized certification um, long term, this is a three three year rollout, so we'll credit opportunities built into that. And then ultimately, they have opportunities here at home to go into the workforce or to, to continue on to a post secondary institution. And what you'll see with this program in particular, right, there are only four schools in the state of Indiana who offer this. None of them are in southern Indiana. So we would be the only school in southern Indiana to offer this program. We have the opportunity to leverage an existing need with utilizing available uh, capital already in place. And we have the, the uh, opportunity to partner with outside, outside institutions, and I mean Purdue proper, the ability to connect with them. And so this program specifically, although yes, it will train students, skill sets, we talked about certifications, um, that that's our industry standard, right? But it will also provide opportunities for employment, but it will also provide for those kids who want to be an engineer at Purdue, right? So they, they can go either track. They can go straight into the workforce or they can enroll, but both are offered through this program. And your teacher is already recruiting for this program and has students who are, we, we added kind of a precursor course yeah. this for him just this coming semester and the response has been extremely positive. So one of the things that we've done probably over the last four years was Manufacturing Day. That's a national holiday in October um, that we have partnered with the Lawrence County Economic Growth Council to make happen for our students. So this year when we did it, we did a pre and a post survey. I actually have the percentage because I wanted to make sure because that it was shocking to me. Um, so before today and this week, were you interested in careers in advanced manufacturing? And of the 85 students who participated in the eighth grade, it was around and 16 students that were interested, which out of 85, that's still good. Um, but then after that, right after experiencing going on, we had five industry partners in Lawrence County um, welcome them, let them see the, the program. And we also did a design challenge at the Boys and Girls Club. Um, we had 36 students. So when we think about having this pathway, our current eighth graders will be coming in, experiencing the Blue Jacket Academy, and then being able to choose a pathway. We want this option for our students. So Which you've got pushing 50% of those kids that have an interest. Yes. Which brings us to the anticipated challenges. If you look, go back to the pictures before, you'll see that the uh, room layout, those things that are included in there, um, they do not come cheap. And so um, there will have to be, although we have commitment from other outside um, financial sources, uh, there would be a cost that would be associated with. So how much 
do we got to do to a room to get it ready like that? I mean, if we're right now, to be honest with you, the space that we're looking at um, is currently open, wired correctly. We have enough power in the room. Um, it is full of old, older metal equipment that needs to be uh, dispersed. Um, but the actual implementation is not significant. Um, the cost for the